that's what caffeine's for. What's going on, everybody? This is the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for cover band musicians and band leaders to learn how to rock more and suck less. Heavily medicated in Atlanta, Georgia, I am Adam Johnson. Uh, doing just fine in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm Dan Ray. This has been one of the most logistically challenging episodes to record in recent memory. Seriously, memories. yeah. You know, between jury duty, um, being very, very ill, and, uh, you know, just other stuff. It's just been, uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But we're doing it. it. Here we be, are. Yeah. It seems to be the kind of the way things are going. Things are, things are not easy at the moment. Yeah. And, uh, that kind of pours over into, uh, the topic of this week's discussion, but how are you doing? I am fine. I am fine. You know, we'll, I'll, 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 um, come back to it in our, in our main discussion, but, uh, we're back in the weekly rehearsal with a new bassist, uh, world and he's turned out to be fantastic. So, um, Sweet. yeah, ha- had a, had a good initial sense of the guy and um yeah his contribution's real strong so yeah I, you know it, it's always challenging when you bring somebody else in and we've talked about this a lot that um somebody's sensibilities kind of bring this unique perspective and you always kind of need to suss out what that looks like when somebody new comes in but I'm glad to hear that it's it's working out for you guys yeah you know that i know that the the concern that i had about him um just from first meeting he, he's my age but he hasn't done the thing that I've done and kept somewhat current with current music, yeah. right? So he's been in classic rock cover bands his whole pretty much, and various other things, Beach and some other things that are popular around here. But, you know, I threw Maroon 5 Sugar at him and he was like, never heard of it. And then, I know, I know, that's that's the level we were at with him at first. And I was like, God, I don't sure. know how this is going to, if he has like any attitude about that, this is going to be hard. And he came yeah. back in the next week, was like, no, Sugar, dig it, here we go. And like was right into the thing, so... Um, cool. yeah, big, big ears, big willingness and yeah, really happy. Yeah. I mean, that's really all that you can ask for Yeah, as long as they're, you know, they're willing to play, to play ball. Yep. That's a good thing. Yeah. But as far as, um, my current situation goes, there's just, there's a lot going on. Not a lot of band stuff because we've got a lot of inquiries and stuff coming in. There's lots of back and forth. I've had to delegate a lot of that to the other guys in the group. And this is something that I haven't talked about outside of just kind of the confines of, the Patreon and and Dan and I, Uh, my dad's been in uh, the hospital for over a month now at this point. And it's been very kind of rough back and forth. We don't, we still don't really know what the prognosis looks like. And um, I think it's important to acknowledge when things are kind of not okay. And frankly, the music stuff has just kind of been something I haven't had a lot of energy to pour into. And so that's kind of where I'm at. And I really appreciate the guys in the group for stepping up and helping me out with things while I'm trying to do a lot of, uh, it's really hard to kind of tie up loose ends and and keep things running when the only person who has been doing those things is uh, not available and also has a a squirrel brain like I do. (laughs) Uh, We had a really really fun slash challenging time, uh, my sister and my wife and I trying to put uh, Christmas away at my parents' house, it became very clear that my my dad had set up this very specific ADHD system in his mind about how things go away in different bins. And uh, man, we had a real hard time trying to figure that out. <laughs> of course, my sister and I both have ADHD too. And so it was just, um, it was really something. But yeah, that's, that's where I've been. It's just been a lot of family stuff. And every once in a while, just texting like, hey, Joey, keep an eye on the inbox. I've got stuff to tend to so. yeah yeah that's where i'm at yeah and you know the 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 way it is when somebody's under that kind of care like it's such a day-to-day minute-to-minute kind of thing like it there's it takes all your focus so yeah you know yeah yeah i had i had that conversation with the uh people at jury duty on monday <laughs> well that's so uh, yet another thing sick going dad on. sick me jury duty i just you know i'm just really racking up the w's right now yeah speaking of w's though let's go to reviews nice this is a fresh review coming right off the heels of our last one uh, five stars on apple Podcasts. required listening for cover bands adam and dan have put together a treasure trove of information about the trials and tribulations of trying to traverse the traditional cover band world <laughs> oh yes, yes yes that's a good one yes pay attention is the next sentence okay just two words You'll learn a ton. My band Catawampus plays in the Hudson Valley of New York. Love We've it. got a lot of New York area folks. Yeah. And we've learned valuable information from listening to these guys. I've now almost listened to all of them as I drive to and from rehearsals, in parentheses, not practice. Thank you. And share my insights with my fellow bandmates. Gentlemen, I'd love to hear a discussion about stage banter between song breaks, 
such as band introductions, social networking, selling merchandise, thanking the venue, the audience, yada, yada. What do you make sure to include and when when to do them over the course of a two or three hour gig? Yep. Keep up the good work. Check out Catawampus Band on IG and on Facebook. That's C-A-T-A-W-A-M-P-U-S. Love it. That's that a great works, topic. So. We should definitely get into that. Yeah. The TLDR answer is uh, frequently, but not too frequently. And don't let it turn into dead air. Yeah, for sure. Now I have to take my glasses back off because the glare is really telling on the video. Ah. I, uh, I apparently coughed so hard that I popped a blood vessel in my eye, which was a surprise to me <laughs> this morning. It's, it's um, been, uh, it just like it piles up, doesn't it? It just... It really does. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I guess I should take my contacts out. That's probably not good. Yeah. You know, on the plus side, I did sleep 16 hours yesterday and I'm down uh, about five extra pounds okay. so you know yeah y- y- you just take what you can take yeah yeah but let's get out of that frame of mind and and start talking about business business let's get into that so if you guys may recall last week's episode i kind of touched on the well our next show is supposed to be in a week but i haven't heard from the client so the next steps for me during that time was I was supposed to send the bad cop email that was like, Hey, we haven't heard from you. You're outside of the bounds of the contract. We need to know what's going on or we're going to release the date. So I did that and they come back with, I'm sorry, we've been replying over and over. We, we were not going to do the event. And, um, that was odd to me because I use Apple mail. And so all of the emails are threaded. And so when, you get an email, you don't get an email, you get the 16 emails that precede it. And nowhere in any of my folders or trash or junk mail was any correspondence from this person other than what happened in the past you know, few weeks. So let's go back. This was a fundraising gala that we got the inquiry probably back in August of last year. And things were moving along. You know, we sent pricing out. Everything was all copacetic. And then in October, another person from that organization kind of swooped in and started renegotiating from scratch. And everything about it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I sent the email to the guys in the Patreon group. And I also showed it to my wife. My wife was like, I don't know why you're so bent out of shape about this. But everybody else was like, yeah, no, that seems kind of weird. Mm. And basically, they kept trying to talk down, talk our pricing down, which I understand that you guys have a budget and that's that's fine. And so we we met them where they were at. And it wasn't a huge discount. It was below what we normally get, but it wasn't unreasonable. And then because there was so much back and forth, Dan was like, hey, so you don't have to like, continue this weird email exchange after this last price cut, just go ahead and send them the contract. Yeah. That way it, you, you're fully putting the ball in their court and you can just move on from the situation. So that's what I do. I hear nothing. I send a couple of follow-ups, no response. So I, I'm, I kind of leave it. First of January of this year, I get an email back from them that says, Hey, we're ready to move forward on this. Let's go ahead and get it locked in. I respond back, awesome. Do you guys still have the copy of the contract? If not, here's another copy. Nothing for like a whole month. And now, you know, up up to today. And it's super frustrating because, you know, if you're counting on business coming in and it covering expenses and that kind of stuff, that's, that's a problem. But it just felt like as soon as that other person hopped into the situation, things were not going to go well. And I feel like every time I have gotten the inclination that a client's going to be difficult or things aren't going to go according to plan, I'm usually right. Yeah. And so as frustrating as this kind of thing is, it's probably for the best. And I had said before that like, hey, you know, we'll fire the client if, if need be. Maybe at some point I should have, like, earlier on, I I could have wrapped this up at the end of the year last year and said, hey, you know, this is a loose deal. We haven't heard from you. We're going to go ahead and release the date. Hindsight's 2020. The the thing that really frustrates me about that situation is that the person that kind of came in to do this 
negotiation or what have you is in the events business. It's mm. like a, like they're a known entity in this area. And if I got an inquiry from her directly, I would be very concerned with doing business with her Yeah, because it's, it was super unprofessional every step of the game. It right. was not, everything about it was like super not cool. And, uh, we were willing to play ball. I jumped through as many hoops as, as I possibly could. And, uh, it still just didn't work out. And yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, I think, I think a, a takeaway, maybe for sure, not the only one, but a, a biggie is, um, you've been in this game long enough and so, so have I, and so have many of our listeners that your sense of which way the wind is blowing is probably pretty accurate, right? You can, you yep. can pretty much feel when a gig, you know, when a deal is starting to fall apart. And uh, there is something to trusting your gut about that. I don't know if you would, I, I don't know. It's always going to be a judgment call of like, when do I really rip off the bandaid and say, you know, you're not holding up your side of the negotiation, Mr. or Mrs. Client. I heard, I heard some advice and business advice that was um, hire slow, fire fast. Yep. Right? It's like, be careful who you bring in and when, when it's not a fit, don't let it linger. Now, I don't, in my in my business life, I don't follow that advice very well. I have uh, currently four people report to me. I'm about to be two more, and um, we just we just let somebody go after six months of trying to get his performance where it needed to be. And I knew six months ago it wasn't going to happen, but I wanted to be that yeah. guy who gave the fairest possible shake. You know, yeah. When it's somebody's livelihood, I I guess I feel a little different than I do when it's a band gig that the gala people aren't. I don't know. I'm a, I feel a little more cutthroat about your situation than I did about that one. Yeah. But I think you really can't trust your gut. I think that's maybe the takeaway. Trust your, trust your instincts. Trust your gut. You know, like with my bassist, I had a, I had a good sense of him, and I was, I had my eyes open to how it might come off the rails. But you know, it is going the way I expected and hoped, and not the way I feared. And I think we're all like, you know, unless you are starting up your first band as you're listening to this episode, <laughs> you probably have enough of a horse sense. And even even then, if you have you know business background or been around people at all, you probably have a sense of how things are going to play out, and and yeah. uh, it doesn't mean things can't surprise you or get turned around or you know. I also hold the contradictory belief that you can work anything out in communication, um, sure. but um, doesn't mean it always goes your way. So yeah, it's toughy. You know, given the situation and like my situation, it, it it's kind of a blessing, right? Because right. you know. Yeah. With all of the chaos that's going on, prepping for uh, a gig with the new lineup and stuff is just not really top of mind. For and, sure. Um, yeah. You know, it gives us basically another, our, now our next confirmed gig is is a full four weeks out. That's good. Uh, which gives us time to prep and stuff. And in the midst of that, I have found little pockets to kind of like, you know, it's a distraction, whatever you want to call it. Because we had a, a client that reached out that we did a, an event for them last year. They want to do it again this year. And they asked for a wider list of songs. And so I found some old DVD. I don't know. It was uh, it was the 500 greatest music videos on MTV in history or whatever. Cool. And it's it's 500 songs. And they're all like you when you look at a list like that, like, well, yeah, these are all great. And it kind of spans that kind of 80s to late 90s deal which is kind of our, our sweet spot and even cutting out the stuff that just doesn't make sense to do in either of those projects there's still so many songs cool and so that kind of gives us a, a template to kind of work towards to kind of add stuff in uh the main premise is to do it for live band karaoke but because all these songs are going to easily integrate with the other projects it's just it's fair game and uh, we have gotten a lot of 90s inquiries. And I think this year is going to be the year that like the 90s group kind of starts to break out. Nice. So it gives us the opportunity to work in new material and widen that deal. Because for the 90s thing, we could probably pull a two hour set pretty solidly, but it would be nice to, to have some variety and, and be able to kind of move stuff around and, and be a bit more flexible in that, uh, that era, just because we haven't done enough of it. And typically it was done in conjunction with the 80s stuff. And we are doing a lot of the kind of 80s, 90s mix, yeah. but we've already booked a full municipal event under the 90s umbrella. So nice. um, that's kind of going to be the the focus this year. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Cool. So uh, onward and upward, as they say. Indeed. There's plenty of stuff to look forward to. There's a lot of stuff going down the pike. 
And I feel like, again, this season has been really like we've been getting a lot of inquiries and stuff and big thanks to the guys in the group for stepping up and uh, taking taking the lead uh, while I've been less than uh, optimally optimized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been optimized just in in a direction that wasn't what you intended. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, I literally like haven't been able to look at a screen in the past like three days. It's been, <laughs> it's been fairly dire. Uh, yikes. Dan's like, hey, can you? I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> no. Fair. All right. I'm shivering. Yeah. It's been, no, yeah, yeah, it's not great. Not great. Anywho, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. Let's Throw do it, it out. Let's do it. Let's do it. And listen, uh, you know, just everybody I know is all lined up thinking about dad and pulling for him and all that. Yeah, I really want to shout out the group. Specifically, I'm just going to shout out Dennis Paget, yeah. yep. who's been hitting me up in DMs and kind of keeping tabs on stuff. I really appreciate uh, everybody who has known about it reaching out and just their support. You know, my my dad has been one of those people that really supported my music journey. And it's this this has been particularly tough to see a person who's been totally in charge of everything mm. in, in my life, just not be there yeah. and um yeah it's uh it's been an adjustment and we're praying for uh, a positive turnout and you know we're just we're doing the best we can we're just trying to figure figure it out 100%. And, um, yeah yeah so uh thanks everybody for the support we'll go ahead and wrap it up yeah. for uh, for this week i'm leaving for wyoming tomorrow we're gonna go to jackson hole and uh go see what old faithful's up to and all that there stuff there you go uh, with the kiddos that was supposed to be a trip for for us and my dad for his birthday uh but we decided to go ahead and go anyway to make those memories with our kids instead of just with him and so we're making it work yeah because that's what life that's what life is like there so thanks everybody for tuning in if you want a sports show you can do that a number of ways but we'll let mike take it from there, there you go. i'll go ahead and call it for this week in atlanta georgia i'm adam johnson in greensboro north carolina i'm dan ray you've been listening to the cover band confidential podcast for the week of february 16th 2024 the TLDR answer is uh, frequently, but not too frequently. And don't let it turn into dead air. Yeah, for sure. Now I have to take my glasses back off because the glare is really telling on the video. Ah. Uh, I, uh, I apparently coughed so hard that I popped a blood vessel in my eye, which was uh, a surprise to me <laughs> this morning. It's, it's um, just been, uh, it just like it piles up, doesn't it? It just it really does. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I guess I should take my contacts out. That's probably not good. Yeah. You know, on the plus side, I did sleep 16 hours yesterday, and I'm down uh, about five extra pounds. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. Y there's y y You just take what you can take. Yeah. Yeah. But let's get out of that frame of mind and, and start talking about business. Business. Let's get into that. So, if you guys may recall, last week's episode, I kind of touched on the... Well, our next show is supposed to be in a week, but I haven't heard from the client. So the, the, the main, the, the next steps for me during that time was I was supposed to send the bad cop email that was like, hey, we haven't heard from you. You're outside of the bounds of the contract. Uh, we need to know what's going on or we're going to release the date. So I did that and they come back with, I'm sorry. You sh we have been replying over and over. We we didn't, we, we were not going to do the event. And um, that was odd to me because, you know, I use Apple Mail and so all of the emails are threaded. And so when you get an email, you don't get an email, you get the 16 emails that precede it. And nowhere in any of my folders or trash or junk mail were was any correspondence from this person other than what happened, you know, in the past, you know, few weeks. So let's go back. This was a fundraising gala that we got the inquiry probably back in August of last year. And things were moving along. You know, we sent pricing out. Everything was all copacetic. And then in October, another person from that organization kind of swooped in and started kind of renegotiating from scratch and everything about it is kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I sent the email to the guys in the Patreon group. And I also showed it to my wife. My wife was like, I don't know why you're so bent out of shape about this, but everybody else was like, yeah, no, that seems kind of weird. Mm. Uh, and basically they kept trying to talk down, talk 
our pricing down, which I understand that you guys have a budget and that's that's fine. And so we we basically we we met them where they were at. And it wasn't a huge discount. It was below what we normally get, but it wasn't unreasonable. And then because there was so much back and forth, Dan was like, hey, so you don't have to like continue this weird email exchange after this last price cut, just go ahead and send them the contract. Yeah. That way it, you, you're fully putting the ball in their court and you can just move on from the situation. So that's what I do. I hear nothing. I send a couple of follow-ups, no response. So I, I'm, I kind of leave it. First of January of this year, I get an email back from them that says, hey, we're ready to move forward on this. Let's go ahead and get it locked in. I respond back, awesome. Do you guys still have the copy of the contract? If not, here's another copy. Nothing. For like a whole month. And now, you know, up, up to today. And it's super frustrating because, you know, if you're counting on business coming in and it covering expenses and that kind of stuff, that's, that's a problem. But it just felt like as soon as that other person like hopped into the situation, things were not going to go well. And I feel like every time I have gotten the inclination that a client's going to be difficult or things aren't going to go according to plan, I'm usually right. Yeah. And so, you know, as frustrating as this kind of thing is, uh, it's probably for the best. And, you know, I had... I had said before that like, Hey, you know, we'll fire the client if, if need be. Um, maybe at some point I should have like earlier on, I I could have wrapped this up at the end of the year last year and said, Hey, you know, this is a loose deal. We haven't heard from you. We're going to go ahead and release the date. Uh, you know, hindsight's 2020. Uh, the the thing that really frustrates me about that situation is that the person that kind of came in to do this, uh, negotiation or what have you, is in the events business. It's mm. like a like, you know, they're a known entity in this area, and if I got an inquiry from her directly, I would be very concerned with with doing business with her. Yeah, because it's it was super unprofessional, at like every step of the game. It right. was not everything about it was like super not cool, and uh, you know we were willing to play ball. I jumped through as many hoops as, as I possibly could. And, uh, it still just didn't work out. Yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, I think, I think a, a takeaway, maybe for sure, not the only one, but a, a biggie is, um, you've been in this game long enough and so, so have I, and so have many of our listeners that, um, your sense of which way the wind is blowing is probably pretty accurate, right? You can you yep. can pretty much feel when a gig you know when a deal is starting to fall apart, um, uh, and uh, there is something to trusting your gut about that. I don't know if you would I I don't know. It's always going to be a judgment call of like when do I really rip off the band aid and say you know you're not holding up your side of the negotiation, Mister or Mrs. Client. Um, I heard I heard some advice and business advice that was. Um, Hire slow, fire fast. Yep. Right? It's like, be careful who you bring in, and when, when it's not a fit, don't let it linger. Now, I don't, in my in my business life, I don't follow that advice very well. I have uh, uh, currently four people report to me, I'm about to be two more. And um, we, just, we just let somebody go after six months of trying to get his performance where it needed to be. And I knew six months ago it wasn't going to happen, but I wanted to be that yeah. guy who gave the fairest possible shake, you know? Yep. Um, when it's somebody's livelihood, I... I guess I feel a little different than I do when it's a band gig that the gala people aren't, I don't know. I'm a, I feel a little more cutthroat about your situation than I did about that one. Yeah. But, um, but I think you really can't trust your gut. I think that's maybe the takeaway. Trust your, trust your instincts, trust your gut. You know, like with my bassist, I had a, I had a good sense of him and I was, I had my eyes open to how it might come off the rails, but, um, but, uh, you know, it is going the way I, expected and hoped and not the way I feared. And, um, 
you know, I think, I think we're all like, you know, unless you are starting up your first band as you're listening to this episode, <laughs> you probably have enough of a horse sense. Um, and even, even then, if you have, you know, business background or been around people at all, you, <laughs> you probably have a sense of how things are going to play out. And, and yeah. uh, it doesn't mean things can't surprise you or get turned around or, you know, I, 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 I also hold the contradictory belief that you can work anything out, um, in communication. Um, sure. but, um, doesn't mean it always goes your way. So yeah. Yeah. It's toughy. You know, given the situation and like my situation, it, it it's kind of a blessing right? because, right. you know, yeah. with all of the chaos that's going on, prepping for uh, a gig with the new lineup and stuff is just not really top of mind for and, sure um, yeah you know it gives us basically another our, now our next confirmed gig is is a full four weeks out it's good uh which gives us time to prep and stuff and um in the midst of that i have found little pockets to kind of like you know it's a distraction whatever you want to call it um because we had a a client that reached out that we did a, an event for them last year they want to do it again this year and uh they they asked for a wider uh, list of songs. And so I found some old DVD. I don't know. It was, uh, it was the 500 greatest music videos on MTV in history or whatever. Cool. And it's, it's 500 songs and they're all like you, when you look at a list like that, like, well, yeah, these are all great. And it kind of spans that kind of eighties to late nineties deal, which is kind of our, our sweet spot. And even cutting out the stuff that just doesn't make sense to do in either of those projects, there's still so many songs. Cool. And so that kind of gives us um, a, a template to kind of work towards, to kind of add stuff in. Uh, the main premise is to do it for live band karaoke, but because all these songs are going to easily integrate with the other projects, you know, it's just, it's fair game. And uh, we have gotten a lot of 90s inquiries. And I think this year is going to be the year that like the 90s group kind of starts to break out. Nice. So it gives us the opportunity to work in new material and widen that deal. Because the, for the 90s thing, we could probably pull a two hour set pretty solidly. Um, but it would be nice to, to have some variety and, and be able to kind of move stuff around and, and be a bit more flexible in that, uh, that era. Uh, just because we haven't done enough of it and typically it was done in conjunction with the 80s stuff and we are doing a lot of the kind of 80s 90s mix yeah. but we've already booked a full like municipal event under the 90s umbrella so nice um that's kind of going to be the the focus this year and uh yeah that's kind of where we're at cool so uh onward and upward as they say indeed there's pl there's uh there's plenty of stuff to look forward to there's a lot of stuff going down the pike and i feel like you know again this season has been really like we've been getting a lot of inquiries and stuff and Big thanks to the guys in the group for stepping up and uh, taking taking the lead, uh, while I've been less than uh, optimally optimized. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you've been optimized just in in a direction that wasn't what you intended. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I literally like haven't been able to look at a screen in the past like three days. It's been, <laughs> it's been fairly dire. Yeah. Yikes. Dan's like, hey, can you? I was like, no. nope. <laughs> no. Fair. All right. I'm shivering. Yeah. It's been. No, yeah. yeah. It's not great. Not great. Anywho, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. Let's Throw do it, it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And listen, you know, just everybody I know is all lined up thinking about dad and pulling for him and all that. Yeah, I really want to shout out um, the guys in the group. Specifically, I'm just going to shout out Dennis uh, Paget, yeah. yep. who's been hitting me up in DMs and kind of keeping tabs on stuff. I really appreciate uh, everybody who has known about it, reaching out and just their support. Um, you know, my, my dad has been... Uh, one of those people that really supported my music journey. Um, and it's this, this has been particularly tough to see a person who's been totally in charge of everything mm -hmm. in, in my life, just not be there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been an adjustment and we're praying for uh, a positive turnout and, you know, we're just, we're doing the best we can. We're just trying to figure it, figure it out. 100%. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thanks everybody for the support. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up yeah. for, uh, for this week. Uh, I'm leaving for Wyoming tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go to Jackson hole and, uh, go see what old faithful's up to and all that there stuff. There you go. 
uh, with the kiddos. That was supposed to be a trip for, for me and for us and my dad for his birthday. Uh, but we decided to go ahead and go anyway uh, to make those memories with our kids instead of just with him. And so we're making it work. Yeah. Because that's what life that's what life is like. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you want a sports show, you can do that uh, a number of ways. But we'll let Mike take it from there. There you go. I'll go ahead and call it for this week. In Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Adam Johnson. In Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. You've been listening to the Cover Band Cafe Dutch Podcast for the week of February 16th, 2024.